Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today I am doing the long awaited video, Carb Cycling 101. What is it and how can you guys do it at home? Essentially carb cycling is a way of eating and a nutrition plan that balances your hormones and can really maximize your fat loss. Pretty much it's just a manipulation of carbohydrates and fats throughout your week and when you consume them. It's quite an in-depth and complicated theory, but I'm going to try and break it down for you guys and make it as simple as possible so that if you do have goals of fat loss and balancing your hormones, that you can do this at home by yourself and it's not too complicated and hard. Carbohydrates have a huge relationship with insulin, insulin resistance, thyroid, leptin levels, and your metabolism. Different people's bodies respond to carbohydrates differently. I know heaps of raw vegans or just vegans who thrive on carbs and they look amazing, but I'm not one of those people and most of you, I'm guessing, are not one of those people if you're watching this video. My body does not respond very well to carbs. I do have a bad insulin resistance problem and when I consume lots of carbs every single day, I just store fat and I break out and it's just a bad time. Before I get into it, I just want you guys to know that carb cycling does require a lot of preparation, organization, and commitment. You need to be committed if you want to see proper results. You can't just do it for three days and expect to get shredded because I can promise you that's not going to happen. You have to do it for at least two weeks, I reckon. And that's pretty fair two weeks and then you'll start to see results basically when we're carb cycling we're going to be manipulating where our body gets its fuel from so the body's favorite form of fuel and energy comes from carbohydrates carbohydrates allows your muscles to be full of glycogen stores and it's really easy for your body to convert it into energy however once you've depleted all your carbs and you've used it all for energy your body has to find another source of energy to run off and that's where it will use your fat. So it will use your stored fat cells to burn through and use as energy. And that is when you start to lose weight and balance your hormones. When your body switches over and uses fat as its energy stores, that is when you are in a ketogenic state and you start to just get shredded and it's awesome. I did strict carb cycling last month and it was amazing. I got results super quick. So when your body has no carbs, it has to use fat as its energy source. Right now you're probably thinking, why wouldn't I just eat low carb all the time and eat high fat? So then I was burning fat all the time. Your body actually adapts, so your body gets used to whatever you're doing. If you just eat low carb all the time and eat high fats, your body's going to get used to using fats as its preferred energy, and this is when people start to plateau and stop seeing results and they think, oh, low carb diets don't work. They do, but <clears throat> the way to sustain your fat loss and sustain your progress is to carb cycle. Q the visual learner. So this is one way that I find it really easy to understand. Basically, this is me and my beautiful body. Inside us, we've got like a tank. So this is gonna be like our glycogen stores and how much carbs we're feeding our body in a day. So in our low carb days, we might have this much full. So your body is going to use that first. It's gonna go, oh great, some carbs, I'm gonna use it for energy. However, there's not enough to sustain you throughout the day, so it's gotta get it from somewhere else. This is when your body has to find energy from somewhere else and it uses your stored fat cells for energy. Like I said, your body will get used to it and start to plateau. This is when you have a high carb day. So you eat so many carbs and you fill up your glycogen stores, you fill it up and your body can run off those carbs for the rest of the day. So these kind of high carb days are good to do when you're doing like a big workout or a super active day, like if you're doing a leg session or you're going surfing all day, you're going hiking, really, really active days, you can do a high carb day. Another thing to note is don't have two high carb days in a row. Your tank is already full. So the next day, the last thing you want to do is have more carbohydrates and have it spill over. And all of this has to be stored as fat. It's really about this tank and manipulating when you have your carbs and how full your tank is. I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to how to integrate carb cycling into your diet. So I'm going to use myself as an example, obviously, because I know my numbers and that's why. Before I tell you my carb cycling and macro numbers, I just want to stress that everyone is different. Even if you think that we're the same height, the same build, the same weight, I can pretty much promise you that our numbers will be different. My body thrives off different macros than yours. I have a different metabolism. I have different hormonal issues. So much goes into working out your macros. So on a regular basis, when I'm not carb cycling, I roughly consume 1,700 calories a day. So that means in a whole week, I'll be consuming 11,800 calories. Now here is when the fun part starts and you can start to manipulate your calories and work out when you want to consume them, what days and what macros. Again, cue the visual learners. I've written up a little graph here. Here is going to be the calories and here are our days of the week. So basically, we are going to have high carb days, moderate carb days, and low carb days. Our low carb days are also low calorie, our high carb days are high calorie, and moderate carb days 
a moderate calorie. So in the whole week, I'm roughly consuming that many calories. So I've got mine written here on my phone. I'm just going to copy it out for you so you can see it. On Mondays, I said that I'm consuming 1,300 calories. So that's obviously going to be my low carb day. So we'll put that there. So Monday is a low calorie and low carb day, 1,300 calories. The next day, I'm going to give myself a little more leeway. I'm going to make it moderate carb. And I'm going to do that for the next two days. So the next two days, I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to have 1,600 calories. So far, I've got one low calorie day and two moderate days. The next day, I want to do a massive workout or have a massive adventure day. So I'm going to do a high carb day here. So Thursday is going to be my high carb day. And that's when I'm consuming 2,200 calories. So just keep in mind, I've already worked out these numbers so they do equate to my average, but yours will change, obviously. This day will be my high carb day. So my tank by the end of the day will be stuffed, stuffed full of carbs. So the next day, let's make it low carb day again, just to drain out my tank. So low carb day on Friday. Wow, this is very uneven. Then Saturday, I'm going to do a moderate day. And Sunday, another high carb day because it's Sunday fun day. And I like pancakes. So far, that's just showing what calories I am consuming when in the week. So we haven't really got into the carb cycling part of it. Your protein will remain constant. So the only thing that we are manipulating is your carbs and your fats. Your protein stays the same throughout the entire week. So the way I work out my protein is I do one pound of body weight equals one gram of protein. So I'm like 115 pounds roughly. So I'm gonna do 115 grams of protein every single day. So that's roughly around here. So I've just filled that in and that just shows that every single day I'm having 115 grams of protein. Now we need to work out our carbs and our fats. Now, like I said, this has already been calculated. If you're not sure how much one gram of protein equates to in calories, you can find all that out on Google. If I go into that now, this video is gonna be way too long. Now let's start working out our fats. On your low carb days, you wanna be eating predominantly fats. I don't mean gram wise, I mean calorie wise. On my low carb days, I'm having 77 grams of fat. That's actually quite a lot of fat. On my moderate carb days, it decreases a little bit and I'm gonna have 60 grams of fat. And on my high carb days, again, I'm gonna do 60 fat. Like I said, everyone's changes, but my body responds really well to fats, so this is the way that I like it. Now, if you haven't guessed, all of this here is carbs. So I'm only having like 35 grams of carbs, which is nothing, let me tell you. On my moderate days, I'm having 150 grams of carbs, which is totally fine with me. And then on my high carb days, I'm having 295 grams of carbs, which is a lot for me. And there you have my weekly carb cycling plan. I don't think I've ever hit my numbers properly. I'm pretty chilled and relaxed when it comes to hitting my numbers. But as long as I'm roughly in that ballpark, then it works. I always see results when I do it like that. And remember, your numbers are going to be totally different. That's just a rough guide um, to what yours could look like. Just make sure your high carb days are not consecutive. Carb cycling is a massive, massive mind game. On your low carb days, you're eating so much fat. For some people you think, but fat makes you fat. How can I eat this much avocado and nuts and get shredded? I swear it works. For other people like me, my high carb days screw with my mind because I know that carbs don't respond well in my body and I think I'm gonna go backwards. But honestly, for carb cycling to work properly and for you to get maximum results, you need to have both low carb and high carb days. The last thing you wanna do is start carb cycling with low carb days and then you think, oh, this is so good, I'm losing weight, and you just maintain a low carb diet, number one, you're gonna do metabolic damage, number two, your fat burning hormone will decrease, and your body is just going to adapt and plateau. So your high carb days are super, super important to maintain your fat loss in the long term. On your high carb days, you want to absolutely bombard your body with carbs. Fill up your glycogen stores so the next day you start from scratch and it's low carb day again and you start shredding. If you're familiar with my channel and my hormonal issues, you know that I got told to go on a low carb, high fat diet for good. I did that for 10 days and it was amazing. I lost so much body fat, I lost heaps of water weight, my skin was amazing, my hair was amazing, but it wasn't sustainable. That's the reason I carb cycle now. I love bananas and acai bowls and granola and bread and everything like that. So carb cycling is a way to reach your goals, but also have the foods 
that you want. If you want to manage your hormones and get the best results, you want to choose whole foods, nutrient dense foods, especially on your low carb days. You don't have that many calories to play with. On your low carb days, your carbs will just come from vegetables. Personally, I don't even try to fit any fruit in because it's not worth it. You can have a couple of berries and then that's all your carbs gone. So just really stick to your green vegetables and your low carb days. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and it made sense. I know it is quite complicated and an in-depth theory, but I wanted to break it down for you and make it simple so that you guys can do it at home. Subscribe to my channel because I put out new videos every single week and please give this video a like because it really, really supports my channel. I will see you in my next video. Happy carb cycling. Thank <laughs> you.